good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody. Today we are discussing the um, different apps, processes and editors um, that we have within SEMSI. What we see on the screen here are an overview of all the current applications, processes, editors and everything else that we are supporting within SEMSI. Uh, quick note as to what is the difference between an app and a process. An app is an application within SEMSI that can only uh, be started or used once. It means that you can have only one tab, one event inbox, one alarm inbox, one uh, monitor wall and so forth. Whereas the processes is a tab that you can open multiple times. It means if you have one monitor, you can have um, two, three, four surveillance tabs with different cameras in each one of those tabs. The same as with the dashboard and the other things that we be going through today. Um, editors, of course, these are um, the application interface to be able to configure uh, some of those apps or processes and the rest of the things you can see on the screen, settings, support, windows, external, are uh, things that we will cover um, so during, during the training um, you know, by us. Good, so let's first of all have a look at apps and as we can see currently we have got quite a few already and we'll go through each one and give you a brief overview as to what each one of these are. Um, in view of what Joshua already mentioned with regards to the VTT training uh, about the SEMSI configurator so that you have a good idea as to when you know we're talking about an event inbox or an alarm inbox what the, its actual purpose is. So let's start with the first one the event inbox. Um, the event inbox is where all events are being sent to the SEMSI system so to the backbone everything are being sent there to this um, huge database and everything is seen as an event. That would be um, bookmarks that are created by, cust by operators. Um, it could be PGUARD events, media events, as you can see in this example. So in this example, we see at the top there was a bookmark event and on the right hand side, we can see a small preview image of the bookmark. Uh, luckily, that was in the winter and not today. And at the bottom of the screen, we can see further actions that we would like to do with this bookmark. And this is the principle we follow. You will see this through all the other um, apps as well, that on the left-hand side, we have filter criteria. In the middle, we have information. And on the right-hand side, we have more detailed information and further actions as what you would like to do. So the event inbox is the inbox where all information are being sent. Um, and some of those events uh, can then be managed and handled by the operator. The next inbox is the alarm inbox. So this is when uh, an event become an alarm, an alarm, or if uh, we are talking about PGUARD, our typical uh, recorder alarms, um, which will be system alarms like uh, um, hard drive failure, fan failure, camera failure. These are deemed as PGUARD events or alarms or image comparison, as we can see here, your, your typical motion recording um, on our uh, recording devices. Also, we see there analytic VCA here. This is an, um, a VCA alarm that, is, that was triggered um, by our system. So line crossing, uh, intrusion, and so forth. Uh, these alarms, again, filter on the left, information in the middle, and further actions to the right where we can switch this camera then to a specific monitor and to go and view and see what the alarm was actually about. <clears throat> the next application we have is the backup. Of course, there um, we have a very powerful centralized backup solution. And um, when a backup is made, it is saved in a big uh, database and there is a list of all the backups made, uh, which is sorted again on the left-hand side by time, by user, um, and we can see the status, is the backup done? Uh, is, the state, is the backup still in progress? Or has the backup failed for any reason? Um, the incident type that is used for that specific backup. And also on the right-hand side, we have a small preview window that shows you that you've, you know, do you have the right camera? Uh, you know, many operators make a mistake by creating the wrong backup. Uh, of the wrong camera. So here we can see, yes, it is the right camera and you can you can see that you can click play and you can in that small window actually play the backup and see, yes, it is the right time. 
bottom right, we have the ability to burn to DVD, export the backup to a removable disk, or under the More button, you have the ability to actually um, play the backup on any one of your surveillance splits that you, um, that you might have. The next application is the wall monitor application, and this is the one that interacts with Alvario decoder hardware. So here you have the ability to visualize your monitor wall that you have you know, within your room. Each Vario decoder can have one, two, three, or four monitors connected to it, and um, each one of those monitors can be managed individually. Unlike in our previous SEMSI version, uh, where it was not possible to individually control multiple monitors that was connected to the same Vario. In the SEMSI 5 platform, this is true, and you can individually control each monitor output um, and decide what kind of split type you would like to see and which cameras you would like to see within that split type. Uh, in this example, we can see that on the left, we have three cameras in live mode and one in playback. The green is live, the yellow, orange is play and on the right we see a different split configuration. Camera number and camera name is displayed uh, within the split to indicate to you um, what's actually currently being displayed. And the layout of, the cam of your monitor wall again is configurable by you. You see here at the top we have different tabs and so you can create uh, different tabs for every wall you have within your property. You might have different rooms with different size monitor walls and that can easily be configured to look exactly like it actually looks in real life so that the operators can visualize uh, you know, which camera to switch to which monitor. Control of the Vario decoders of what inside you can see is at the bottom. You can switch the camera to live or play or even control the PTZ directly from um, the GUI if you need to. The next application we are looking at is the CAT app, the casino automation. And here we have the integration into um, two games at the moment, Baccarat and Blackjack. The, um, the example we see on the screen is for a Baccarat table, where we can see the information of the, the Baccarat game. Uh, we see the cards at the top, which was the result of the game. We can also see the different boxes, who actually played, and the value of the the amount that was bet by box and who won. We can see that box seven won and the other box is actually lost, as covered in blue. We can also see on the timeline that there are, is an indication of when the game was played with some different symbols at the bottom being uh, FC, which means first card, EG meaning end of game and EP is not me, it's end of play um, in, in this regard. So on the right hand side, we have some information regarding game duration, payout duration, float value, and so forth. And this is all part of the CAT uh, application and all the, the, the CAT analytics that we do within casinos. The next application is called Live Alarm View App. This application works together with the Alarm Inbox. So without the Alarm Inbox, you cannot have a Live Alarm View App. What this means is that if you get an alarm which is video related, you can have the ability to switch the camera automatically to this window. It will open up the camera picture to either live or playback. You have the choice what you would like to see. In this case, we can see all pictures went to playback. You can then move your mouse over this that specific image and you will get two options. One says show alarm inbox and the other option says show alarm process. And this is the handling of the alarm. Either you want to see it as a list or you would like to see the alarm uh, live, go to playback maybe a few seconds before the alarm and physically see what happened uh, where at that point you will be able to um, process the alarm and confirm it. Once the alarm is confirmed, the window where this uh, image was uh, being shown will then disappear and it will go back. So it's the principal black screen technology as they, may, as they say where if there's no alarms, the screen will be completely black, and as alarms come in, they start filling up the different squares. The next application we have is the facial recognition application, and in brackets, I've written their POC, so proof of concept. Uh, we have made this um, application uh, purely to show that we can integrate into facial recognition systems. We are currently developing an interface into two different engines, 
Um, this is un still, the, still underway, the development, and not completed yet. But we have an application to show facial recognition and that we can do facial recognition with regards to showing blacklists, whitelists, um, and also generating alarms if a person walks through the field of view of a camera. We can show all of this. But please note that the current facial recognition application is not a final version. It is only a proof of concept um, application. The next application we're looking at is the logbook. Of course, every action the user does is logged uh, within the system and saved within our database. And here you can search for that. Um, you can see again on the left hand side, you have all the filter criteria where you can filter down to the, the person, to the workstation, to a specific date and time, um, also to what kind of service, PTZ control, and you can even filter down if you move your mouse to the little uh, magnifying glass at the, uh, the end for this specific uh, type PTZ uh, steering, you can also see exactly when did the or how did the operator steer the camera did he go up did he go left did he go right all of that information is logged as well this information of course can then be exported uh, into a csv file format uh, to be used for investigations normally the next application is our map app and uh, if you've had a look at some of the documentation we have with the map you will find that um, the, the map is divided into three different sections the first one is the map that uses jpegs bitmaps or pngs um, in this example we have the map at the bottom it's a it's a picture of of an airport with some camera icons on and integrated in the same application we have some video splits so this is possible you do not need a separate monitor for map you can have one uh, split or one tab, which is the map and video all in one. And you can drag and drop cameras from your map, or you can just double click on a camera and it will switch uh, to the active um, split. You can see the colors there. Uh, you can also green meaning live. If one of those were in playback, the actual icon on the screen will be orange. And you can also see the field of view of the cameras uh, being indicated. Very, very simple to actually create these maps and to put the cameras on the map. Very, very similar to Smart View Client maps and how that is done. So very, very easy. If you have a little bit more uh, complicated map or more cameras, for example, like in a casino, uh, we can also have AutoCAD. So CAD or DWG files can be imported. Again, very similar to the SEMSI 3 uh, way of doing things and uh, here you can again have a layer with your camera numbers on and that uh, layer automatically gets imported and your camera icons are automatically uh, placed on the, the, the map where the number is. Uh, same principle applies where you can have split screens as we have in the example to switch cameras to those splits within the actual um, map application. The next part of maps is active elements. Um, the first two uh, that I've shown, shown now, bitmaps, JPEGs, PNG, and CAD, these maps are already finished and completed. The active elements is in the final stage of development and should be completed by the end of June, um, where you have the ability to now physically show active elements like doors, uh, fire, intrusion, um, any kind of interface that has an active element on, on it can now be shown within the map. And if there is an interaction with that access control, as we can see in this example, you can open, close, or lock a door directly from the map as well. So this is a, um, quite a, a big step forward within, for our map integration and how we're going forward and how we see SEMSI going forward uh, in the industry, being providing much more information on the map and not only just the ability to switch cameras uh, to monitor outputs. The next application we have is our snapshot viewer. So every operator has the ability, uh, if the user rights uh, are, you know, permissions have been given, that the operator can take a snapshot. So he is taking a image which is saved directly on his computer. It's not saved centrally, it is saved locally on his computer and he can use that those snapshots in a report or whatever he would like to do with them. Um, when he does make a snapshot, he doesn't have to go and look for those snapshots using Windows Explorer. He can, there is an app, the, the viewer app, where he can then go and see all the snapshots that he has taken and being able to view them and actually edit them, which we'll see a little bit later on. 
The same applies for video viewing apps. Um, if the operator has the ability to make a local recording and there is a dependency, the workstation hardware must have a NVIDIA graphics card. Without an NVIDIA GPU graphics card, it is not possible to make a local recording. But if, he, if the workstation does have that, it means that the operator can make a recording of the split that he is viewing. Uh, any camera switches that he makes in that split is then recorded locally to his hard drive. Again, like snapshots, it is not stored locally, it is on his hard drive only. Um, on the left, we can see there are some thumbnails. Uh, there we see a small thumbnail with some details. The previous view for snapshot, we only saw thumbnails without the extra uh, metadata detail. You can click play and you can view. Very important little uh, factor here is that the local recording records not the original size of the camera, it records the, the, the resolution of the split. So if you have a very small split and you do local recording, the recording will be the size of that split. So not of your 4K camera resolution or whatever camera you had. Next application, notification viewer. As in Windows, you get every day more normally the bottom right corner of your screen, you will get some information to say, oh, oh, you need to look at your firewall or there are some updates available for your system. The same applies to SEMSI. If you get a notification, these notifications normally would be something like, uh, you've just taken a snapshot and the snapshot was successfully saved. It's the general information. Or maybe if you try to control a PTZ, which is currently locked by another person, you will get information that this PTZ cannot be controlled because it is locked by another user. Um, if you've missed this notification and you don't know what it was, you can always click on the notification viewer and see what that information was. Suppressed alarm application. Of course, this, uh, app, this app only functions if you have the alarm inbox. Without the inbox, you can't suppress alarms because you don't have alarms. Um, what this application does, it means that if you're getting an alarm which is constantly sending um, you alarms, let's say it's a camera failure, um, and every 10 seconds you are getting the message that the camera has failed, and then it is online again and offline and online and offline, you have the ability to now select this camera, to select then the alarm type, and to say, I would like to stop getting this alarm for the next hour, two hours, days, whatever you, you can see there is a time and date. You can type a reason why you are suspending this and then you can confirm and that is then saved uh, in the database meaning that that alarm will then be suppressed until the time runs out and you can see all your suppressed alarms in a list under this app and also the ones which are expired. The expired alarms are shown for 24 hours before it is also removed from the list so a supervisor can very quickly see what his operators have been doing um, over the last 24 hours. Right, that covers all our uh, applications um, that we have currently in SEMSI and we are now looking at our processes. So as I mentioned, processes can be open multiple times. So I can have multiple surveillance tabs, dashboard tabs, peer remote messenger interfaces, contraventions and investigations. So let's look at the first one, surveillance process. This is the one that you know most people will be familiar with and uh, would probably want to use. Um, as a VMS, as that is the biggest VMS part of the system. We have the different, in this example, we have four splits. One is in live mode, one is in playback, also with some smart finder results. Uh, and two at the bottom is in sync play mode. So that shows us the blue timeline or the blue bar at the bottom, telling us that those two cameras are synced together. In the timeline, I have got lots of little binoculars. This is the result from my smart finder search that I have in the top right hand corner. So our surveillance process are there to give us information regarding video. Um, everybody that has been part of our training sessions or has played with SEMSI would be familiar with this already. And here we can see at the top in this example, there are three tabs open, surveillance one, two, and three uh, with different splits. You can also see in one, it's a two by two split. And on the surveillance tab two and three, it says single split. So that will just be one big split in the middle. Good. Our next process, which uh, takes us a little bit away from our typical VMS scenario and where 
as a company we are uh, fo putting a lot of focus on is data management. And here we see our dashboard process, um, which we, in this example, have created a very simple example showing bookmarks, users, and events. And instead of having lots of lists of information, as we've seen before, we can now visualize those lists in a graph, in a graphical format. We can see the bookmark uh, event chart showing us the different priorities of bookmarks that was created at that time uh, of day. We can see the online users currently of that user group. Uh, we can see the event chart. So what kind of events have we received? Uh, facial recognition events, analytic events. And if you would click on a section of that pie chart, it will take you automatically to the inbox and filter for, let's say, facial recognition event. Um, this is the idea behind the dashboard. It is there to provide you with quick information and it is a door opener to the actual application uh, for the actual information. So if I would click on any part of the pie chart, it takes me to the correct, it opens up the correct app or process and shows me the information I need. Bottom left is the backup chart, again, showing us the information as to what kind of backups my operators have done based on the um, incident type that was selected when the backup was made. The maintenance camera, which cameras are currently in maintenance mode that we can see there um, in that um, simple uh, widget. And bottom right is the messenger that we can see, hey, what actually somebody just sent me a message, what is that? Or I log on to my, uh, my SEMSI workstation in the morning and I get a to-do list from my supervisor what tasks I should be doing today. Pro, uh, the dashboard uh, process, many dashboards can be created. It is user-defined or by group. And uh, um, each dashboard, also the split set uh, that we have. So here we have a, a three by two. You can create any type of uh, dashboard layout with uh, big screens, little screens on the side, whatever it is up to the operator or the systems administrator to decide how to uh, create his dashboard. The next new process, which might, people might not uh, have seen before, and this is the P-Remote process. Um, so the P-Remote process is a new um, process we have that is now available that works with our recorders that have P-Remote enabled. So this is a separate process from the surveillance tab. And the reason why we split the two uh, was that there are many features that P-Remote does not support which the surveillance tab does support, uh, synchronized playback and things like that is, is one example. And uh, to try and minimize the confusion with operators, we decided to create a separate process tab for P remote cameras. It, um, there is no license on the on SEMSI for P remote because the license sits on the recorder. Uh, the P remote option is always available and if the camera um, or the recorder allows a P remote connection, you can get a P remote image. The images that you see are really, looks really bad. It's done on purpose, um, just to show that you can make um, a very low quality connection with the P-Remote using QCIF uh, nine kilobits, um, just to, to show that is actually a P-Remote connection. Of course, the, the, the filter settings and the configuration is as before. You can configure for each connection with P-Remote how you would like that connection to look like um, to get the quality that you need over the bandwidth that you actually have. The next process we have is our messenger process. And uh, as you might have heard me said before, um, I really like this, this process and I call it WhatsApp for SEMSI, um, where this messenger application, you can write messages between operators. So text messages, sending information backwards and forwards to a specific person or to a group of people. So as you have in WhatsApp, you can create a group. You could create, a, a supervisor could create a group for all the people which is currently on the shift and he can send a to-do list to all of them at the same time. And they all receive the message. Um, as you can see in this image, it is more than just uh, text that you can send. You can also send bookmarks. That is what we see there. It's not an image, but it is a bookmark that is sent. And if somebody would click on that bookmark, it will take you directly to the video file at that specific point in time. You also can send SEMSI links, which is what you see further up in that message chain, where um, you could save a complete screen 
of let's say four cameras each at different times and you can send that link to uh, operate and say please have a look at the following video you don't have to type the whole message saying please look at camera one at eight o'clock and camera two at 8 15 and you know so forth you can just send the link and when he clicks on that link his SEMSI system will automatically mimic the screen that you had on your computer at the time so message uh, process um, it's also uh, you will also see messenger as a window you can completely use a complete window on your pc for messenger if you would like to that's also an option the next interface we have is or process we have is interfaces these are our typical existing interfaces that we had within semz3 um, where we would have in this case we see point of sale some data from point of sale interface it is the first um, uh, a view of our interfaces where every possible data that we are getting from an interface can be seen inside columns at the moment there it doesn't make a lot of sense we see a lot of numbers and things because everything is enabled but the operator has the ability to really choose which column he would like to see and also on the left hand side then for which column does he want to filter for and this makes his life very easy to find a specific information of course on the right hand side we have the little video tab um, the whole point of an interface normally is to be able to get the information and then click on play and being able to see the video at that point in time when somebody bought a cola light for example or if uh, a slot machine door was opened uh, or a note counter um, got jammed or access control when somebody walked through a door um, searching for a person's name and finding him walking you know badging at the door and walk through that is what the interface process is there for as a process it means as well that you can have multiple processes open uh, looking at different parts of the system so point of sale node counting access control all those kind of things can then be looked at simultaneously where previously this was not possible contravention process this was very specifically made for um, the london police um, but can be used for any police environment um, with regards to traffic violations that is what it's designed for it is a, a two-stage process and the first stage is handled within the SEMSI system the second stage is handled within the backbone hemisphere um, contravention uh, web interface but the first stage is where the operator would capture the incident taking place so the, the contravention taking place he clicks on the start button which we can see at the bottom here and the stop and can so if he sees a car potentially is going to to turn in this case let's say the red car is going to turn right uh, which is not allowed um, he the operator clicks on start and when the person turns right uh, he watches him follows him until um, you know he disappears from the scene and then he presses stop and that would mean that a video a backup is then made from the start time to the stop time that was done by the operator if the operator realizes he's made a mistake he can always click cancel and that cancels the the whole process the second part of the of the contravention process as i mentioned is handled by the the back backbone server um, which is a web-based interface that's a discussion for another day the next process that we have is the investigations process and the investigations process shows us uh, again was done very much uh, together with the city police of london and also sussex police uh, where they wanted specific workflows uh, based on bookmarks so an operator would generate a bookmark and from a bookmark you can add additional metadata and this metadata is custom specific so each customer can choose what he would like to see as you can see there on the left, we have CAD reference, occurrence ID, operations name, MOPI group, and so forth. This can, these, na these names can be anything the customer wants, and those things also can be mandatory or not. In the case of London Police, the three that has a star, one of those three is mandatory. Not all three, but one of them is mandatory. And uh, this is the first step of the investigations process. Once I filled in the information, I can then create my evidence which takes me further in the whole process good the next is people tracking and this relates to our tracking of people using the 3d people counters and the wrong direction so the the system that we have for the airports at customs 
uh, where if somebody decides to turn around and walk back from the dirty side or the land side back into air side through the customs uh, nothing to declare section, that's when um, you would uh, get an alarm. alarm. When you click on the alarm, you would then get this view, uh, which shows you the tracking of where the person walked. So where we see on the, the little yellow dots, we can see, and if you click on any of those dots, the W8 camera will show you exactly that position uh, on the right-hand side. And so you can follow a person very, very easily. You can see he went to the right. I click on there, I click play, and then I can follow the person exactly. Uh, did he turn around? Where did he go? And be able to stop uh, anybody from closing the airport. As we know, this can, call, this can really cost a lot of money if airports are being closed, if people are lost um, when they enter from the land side to the air side. Right, that covers all our uh, processes and now we can look at the editors. There are six editors to look at and the first editor is the dashboard editor. I already mentioned that this can be customized per user or user group and of course there are many different widgets. As we have here on the right hand side there's a drop down list which uh, gives you many many widgets to choose from and uh, you can then decide what kind of widget you would like. Uh, in this case, the example here is just a distribution chart uh, and you can also depict the colors that you would like to have. If you don't like the default colors, you could you know, choose different colors you would like to see in your chart. Uh, um, and there are many, many different widgets. And as we are um, progressing with different developments, especially also on interfaces, more uh, widgets and different charts will become available uh, for people to use. The layout that you can choose, again, here we can see at the top it says 3 by 2 split dashboard. You can generate at the bottom here new layouts, very, very simple, and uh, being able to use them then for your dashboard. Hunter mode, um, this is a feature which we all know from still from the SEMSI 3 days, uh, where you have the ability to choose a camera, put the camera in the middle, and then you can choose to put other cameras around this camera, which basically helps the operator if a person would walk out of the scene in the middle of the, the view, he is then, uh, you, is, you are then possible to select a camera top left, top right, uh, which then switches to the middle. And so you can follow a person in live and in playback through um, you know, the views if he moves from one camera to the next. And this is where you configure this. It is not an automatic configuration. You have to do it manually. Um, where you have to pull the cameras in and um, put them in the right place where they physically are uh, with relation to the camera in the middle. Image editor, we already actually mentioned there, our images taking snapshots and this is the extension to that. After I've taken a snapshot, I might want to just add a little bit more information and that we can do in here. We can add extra um, shapes as we've done there and we can add extra text. Uh, we can blur people's faces, we can do many things with this static image, which we can then, then save again locally on my own PC, or I could save this then, uh, send this to my server, which means that that picture is then saved centrally and can be used as evidence uh, by myself or by other people. Layout editor, this is where I create different layouts. Um, as we can see on the left, Left hand side, there are a few layouts that have got uh, little lock signs next to it. These are the layouts that we provide as default and which the operator cannot delete. But all the other ones that we see here are things that the operator can create by himself, of course, if he has the rights. Um, so any split layout you can think of, uh, you know, three columns of very long, thin, maybe you have, uh, you know, distance panomeras, then that would make sense to have a view which is just three long splits or you might have an area panomera, which then something like here, the inverted T might uh, might work. Um, it's up to you how to create, very simple at the top. You can see here columns, rows, easy. You can also save your layout as a surveillance layout or as a dashboard layout. So you can create one specifically for different types of dashboards. Sequencer editor. Sequencer is your typical uh, uh, say old school uh, method of switching cameras to monitors. So I activate a sequence and every 10 seconds it switches another camera uh, to that monitor. We've taken this a little, little bit further where you, you, have a, you start your sequence on the left. You can see they give it a name, normally something more intelligent than just sequence one. 
you then have tracks and in this case you can see the track is split one split two split three split four it means that we actually when we start the sequence we don't just get one monitor jumping from one camera to the next we get the monitor to turn into a quad split and in each split we can now have cameras rotating from one two three four and so forth and in this example we see on track three we have three cameras that every 10 seconds are switching and then we have a gap of uh, what one minute uh, or 10 seconds and then we again we follow on with the next uh, cameras and on the bottom we can also see a good timeline view of you know for each split how long the cameras will be shown inside um, that split view. You can also say for every camera, if it is a PTZ camera, you could um, select different presets, meaning you can select PTZ camera one, go to preset one, wait 10 seconds, then same camera, go to preset two, same camera, go to preset three, and so the camera can do pretty much a tour jumping between different presets um, by using this sequence editor. The split sets editor is uh, in 73 terms the old salvos and here you are you can create again your own layout choose the layout and choose the cameras that should be inside the layout and save it with you know a name that would make sense so let's put all my entrance cameras together let's put all my exit cameras together and i can then call those uh, from my split sets and i can select them on a predefined uh, predefined layout output location so I can say well if I select my split set it always goes to monitor one or I can always just drag the split set onto any other monitor and that would then appear on that specific monitor and this is where this is configured so thank you very much for your attention